So let's get started. I'd like to begin uh, firstly as Griffith University acknowledges and pays respect to the past and present and future traditional custodians and elders of the nation uh, and the con continuation of cultural, spiritual and educational practices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And welcome uh, acknowledging all the traditional owners of the different lands on which um, the university is located. And here are the names of the traditional owners for those locations. Help is only a step away. Uh, if you, it's great that you've discovered um, our series of career, uh, career development um, seminars, uh, and here you are today. Uh, here's a picture of our team. Uh, we have a lot of very highly skilled uh, career consultants standing by to help you with a whole range of any of career development uh, questions, skills, concerns, um, decision making, etc. So. You can make appointments uh, via the Career Hub and access all of our resources. So what we'll be covering today is really having a look at defining what career networking actually is, uh, identifying opportunities to develop your professional network, some key networking uh, strategies, um, and also helping to develop your what we call your personal brand and your elevator pitch, so how to approach people and drafting a networking plan to suit your individual circumstances and starting you thinking about how you can network with intention. So let's begin with networking. What is it? Uh, I appreciate anybody who would like to um, uh, if, if you feel free, if you want to take the microphone or uh, contribute your ideas into the chat, you're most welcome. I encourage you. So maybe uh, if you could uh, use the chat right now to just sort of, you know, put it put in the chat. What comes to mind when you hear the word networking? What does it, you know, what does it conjure up for you? So pop your ideas in the chat would be great. What does it mean to you when you hear the word networking? What, what sort of notions come to mind? How does it make you feel? What is it? Do we have the people writing away? Oh, good. Thanks, thanks, Moon Kin. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Building a connection, connecting with people. Good. Okay, so we've got uh, the theme of connection. Excellent. Any other ideas? Get to know more people and maintain a good relationship. So you, so connecting and relationship building are the themes that are coming through on the chat. Definitely. So really, um, career networking involve, does involve using personal, professional, academic or family contacts, you know, to assist with um, your job search or to help you achieve your career goals, learn about your field or another field that you'd like to work in. Let's have a look at, at a definition. So here we have a definition to start with. Networking is building. Right, and nurturing of personal and professional relationships to create a system or chain of information, contacts and support. So important to this definition is the concept that relationships build up over time through mutually beneficial contacts. And so underlying that is making those connections, isn't it? So networking, uh, it's important to think about networking too. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So don't be waiting until you need something, such as advice, a job or career direction assistance, um, to be, begin building your networks, right? So it's, it is about building, but also very much about nurturing, connecting with people. And as uh, T. Kim had said, is maintain a good relationship. So we're starting to think 
deeply about the notion of networking. And really, networking has been shown to foster career success from understanding what is possible to developing skills, knowledge and gaining employment. So before we start, here's a quick question for you to consider. What was the last thing that you did to enhance your professional network? Anybody want to put their ideas into the chat? Does anybody, um, you know, you'd like to share with us something that you've done? What was the last thing that you did or a thing that you did um, to, uh, you know, enhance your professional network? Or are you just at the moment starting to think about the importance of this and get going? Anybody got any comments in the chat? What, has anybody um, you know, reached out to somebody in their network networks? Um, you know, have you been to an event or a, uh, industry panel session or have you reached out to somebody at all? Has anybody you can either put a thumbs up or thumbs down if you yes I have or no I haven't done it yet. Any feedback from from people in the room? Oh, good. Thanks, Min Kin. Thank you. So, so you've done something to uh, nurture your network. You've actually reached out to somebody. You have sort of begun building your networks. So, networking means different things to different people. And often, the first thing that people think about um, is what's represented in this photo. You crowded rooms with name badges, a few drinks thrown in. And yes, this is often the context we will find ourselves in. But of course, networking is much more than sharing a wine and having a chat. So let's dig a bit deeper. Here's a little poll. Do you feel comfortable networking? Yes, no, somewhat? Would you put your uh, thoughts in the chat there on the poll? How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable networking? Are you feeling confident, you know, level of confidence? or you're just not quite sure about it right now. Where are we going? Just waiting for some responses to come through on the chat. Somewhat. Thank you, T. Kim. Somewhat. Networking is kind of easier said than done. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, wanting to know about how to break the ice. Sometimes it's comfortable. Okay. So I wa I'm wondering there, uh, when do you feel comfortable? In what sort of situations is it comfortable? Uh, but it also depends on the occasion as well, I suppose. Punchdo, how do you, when does it feel comfortable for you? You just want to put your response in the chat or please feel free to take the mic. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is I just would like to say hi to everyone. Hi. Uh, I would say that I feel comfortable while networking, especially if I have a people or if I try to network with the people of same likes or if we are trying to get into the same field of study or same field of the work. And if I'm trying to network with the people who have like different background or background of studies, then I don't feel really comfortable at first because like uh -huh. I don't have much ideas and all. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're fine. You feel more comfortable when you know that there's some kind of commonality and maybe um, similar interests that you can um, discuss. Is is that what I, that's what I'm hearing? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, thinking about you know building confidence in um, actually uh, networking or talking and building relationships with people who don't necessarily have an exact um, discipline or interest area. So. Thanks very much for sharing that. Very brave of you to take the mic. Good on you. Um, and th thanks very much for your input. Uh, Min Kyun says, I would put myself as somewhat um, and uh, sometimes feeling a little bit awkward. All right. 
So, you know, there are many reasons why people might find social spaces overwhelming. Um, and confidence in networking comes from practice. So as you network and build connections, um, confidence builds. So it all starts with getting started, basically. So hopefully we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about um, this, uh, how to sort of get around and, and reframe how you're thinking about networking and some tools for that, you know, that breaking the ice. So, you know, why do people dislike networking so much? So a lot of people, when they hear the word networking, will go, oh, no, oh, they have a certain image of it, uh, a picture in their mind about it. Um, so, you know, uh, there's one of the biggest barriers to effective networking is the belief that you have to work the room and you're know, meeting and impressing everyone there. So this style of networking is not effective uh, as it doesn't really enable the type of genuine connection as we um, uh, several people mentioned earlier about that connection. Uh, so it's, um, it's really about that genuine connection that really helps uh, relationships truly flourish. Effective networking is all about building quality relationships that actually endure over time. So you're not alone uh, if you're feeling a little bit, um, you know, uh, somewhat confident about networking. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, there's been quite a lot of uh, research done, um, particularly uh, from Harvard Business School, for example. And on the slide here is some of the results of their research study. Uh, in, um, to, you know, they tested the way people felt when they engaged in what we call instrumental networking or making connections with the purpose of advancing your career as opposed to personal spontaneous networking where your goal is to build emotional connections and friendship. They found that instrumental networking made people feel morally impure and physically dirty. Uh, the study suggests that the reason for this is that people feel that they cannot justify their actions to themselves and the lack of justification comes from the difficulty people have in framing some forms of networking as motivated by a concern for other people versus a selfish concern. So one idea to overcome um, negative feelings about networking may be to reframe your motivation. So by networking, you're likely to gain further knowledge of your industry and new contacts and be in a better position to not only advance your own career, but help others. So networking can also increase job performance. So it can be just as good for your, organi you know, your organization or yourself as it is for your career. Uh, in a follow-up study, the same researchers found that people with greater power felt less dirty about professional networking than their, did their junior colleagues. So this suggested that as you become more experienced in networking and, and more confident over time uh, and more comfortable uh, with the value you offer to your networks, you will feel uh, more at ease. So there's just a, a little um, outline of some of the research on about you know, um, what people feel about networking based on um, the motivations. I'm just going to play you a little clip, and this is one of my favourite uh, ways to reframe how you think about networking. So I'm just going to play this little video for you.
Okay, so really what comes down here is curiosity and an interest in others. I hope you enjoyed that clip and start think, reframing how you're thinking about networking as just asking for directions. And uh, in my experience, I have found exactly that. It is um, always amazing to me how many people are just quite willing to sort of point you in the right direction, have a conversation, but curiosity is critical so networking there is it's a two-way street and you notice there from the from the video that people who uh, helped others out actually felt good about doing that uh, i ran the university's industry mentoring program for many years and there were industry uh, you know highly qualified industry professionals who volunteered their time to mentor Griffith students and some of them have been doing it for many many years and when I asked them the question as to their motivation for uh, mentoring a different you know university student year after year after year uh, they actually uh, came back to me and said that they got so much out of the experience themselves and that's what kept them coming back to the program so networking is a two-way street and it's, it is important to give back and people feel good about helping others. So curious questioning uh, shows that you know, you shows interest and helps build that connectivity whilst also extracting the best possible information and insight. So adopt a curious mindset is uh, one of my top tips in networking. So overcoming networking anxiety, um, you know, people do, particularly um, you know, if you're faced with a very, for the very first time in a very large networking event, you know, in-person event, um, can be quite, particularly if you haven't done a lot of that before, can actually feel quite overwhelming. So, but practice makes perfect. Uh, and start thinking about um, your, the, your own um, dysfunctional thinking, uh, halting the comparisons, uh, can you, just connecting with people that you genuinely, genuinely like, uh, thinking about you know, what's the worst thing that can happen. Um, you can make a list of five people who you haven't spoken to, uh, spoken with in some, in some time, all of whom are in your professional space. You might just uh, start off easy by you know, contacting them by phone or in person, or if you're on LinkedIn, and renew the acquaintance. Um, don't have an agenda, just make it a friendly chat um, to catch up. So uh, from that point of view, you know, that can be a, a good way to ease yourself into it and start, re, you know, um, reconnecting. You could respond to um, three emails a day, uh, you know, with a personal, personal phone call um, instead of an email, you can actually phone someone up. Some um, things happen serendipitously in live communication that can't occur in your know, electronic space. Um, and uh, in this digital world today that I think a lot of people do avoid using the phone, but it is actually a really great way to um, you know, uh, deepen connections when you actually speak to people in person. You could start thinking about making it a point to, to attend social events um, and, uh, and networking opportunities at the you know, uh, events that your school is offering or the career service, we're doing a lot of that. Uh, we offer lots of opportunities and you know, better yet, you know, become part of organising committees for events where you can, you know, in student associations, for example. Um, attend a job fair, you know, a careers fair, there's one coming up next week, um, you know, and gain a little bit of experience in talking about yourself succinctly. And um, I'll be talking a little bit more about um, developing pitches as we progress through this. Um, and so, you know, answer those questions, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, look for workshops and seminars in your area uh, that you might be able to attend. So just looking for opportunities. And so all of these little things uh, provide you with an opportunity to meet people and, can, and connect with people and adopt that curious mindset to uh, uh, where you can actually get to know people better. So why is networking important for your career? All right. Anybody uh, like to put their thoughts in the chat? What, what do you think? Why is networking important for your ongoing career? What comes to mind? What's the purpose of doing it?
Why would you want to do it? What are some of the advantages for you? What's your goal for, net, for networking? Why do you want to do it? And what are some of the benefits? Any, uh, any input in the chat? Anybody want to put forward what they think is, why is it important? Okay, just waiting for some responses to come through. Or if anybody feels uh, they want to take the microphone, feel free. Thank you. Uh, Funsho, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, probably not. Uh, through networking, we get to learn our, uh, about ourselves as well as help others. Excellent. All right. Thanks very much for that. So uh, helping others and getting to learn about yourself. What else do we have? So we're thinking about, you know, why should we do it? What are some of the benefits of, net, of building professional networks? And of course, it's um, some of the benefits might change depending on you know where you what stage you are in your own um, career development, where you're at the beginning or you're in the mid midst or uh, mid career, or you're hoping to make some kind of transition. So sometimes your, your your purposes might be a little bit different. Right? Do we have any other for three networking? Do we have any other? Thoughts about some of the benefits and why it's important? Ah, very good. So, uh, Min Kyun, yes. So, um, very good point. So, you're interested in a particular career, so, and, and so networking uh, with um, people in the professional personnel to better understand what's expected in the chosen career. So finding out more information about uh, various options you're considering or your discipline area. Excellent. Okay, so seeking insight. So here are some you know, reasons. So all of these points contribute to your career development um, and increase your chances of finding work, right? Or helping to, to navigate your career decisions to uncover opportunities that maybe you didn't know existed. So why network? So it's about building a support network. So building, uh, you know, connecting and having a community to support you uh, to discuss, you know, common challenges, opportunities, etc. cetera. Uh, it helps build confidence. You know, stepping outside your comfort zone builds social skills and also helps to contribute to your professional identity. How are you, uh, you know, coming around to thinking about yourself as a professional and what that identity looks like? Uh, having good support networks is also a predictor of job search success and provides access to the hidden job market. So there are a lot of opportunities. You know, statistics show that around 70% or so of uh, all available opportunities are not actually advertised. They can come through networks. Also to why network, so it's really about the importance of relationships and we've been talking a lot about that, access to information, access to opportunities uh, and developing a, a, a professional reputation. So it's, it's um, that old saying, you know, oh, it's not, it's not um, what you know, it's who you know, but in the end it comes down to who knows you. What's your reputation? What's your brand? And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So some great other benefits, right? Better connected people are more likely to climb the ladder faster. They face shorter periods of unemployment in the face of losing a job, for example. So if they've got good networks, they can mobilize those networks to help uh, identify further opportunities. Uh, research shows they receive higher quality job offers, so a stronger salary, more aligned with 
authentic self and more advanced when you know uh, when a job is obtained through a referral I see this time and time again uh, even in my own unit in, in, within the university if there's a new role coming up we need uh, you know, depending on which way the organization's going, we might have a new project, we're looking for someone to take that on. One of the first questions is, does anybody know anybody who would be good for this? And so, uh, you know, um, we can use our own networks to recommend or put, put those opportunities out to our networks. Now the social um, the opportunities are attached to people. I really love this this notion. Uh, so sociologist Mark uh, Granovater from Stanford University wrote about the strength of what we call weak ties in building our professional networks way back in 1973. In brief, um, his work compares weak ties to bridges. And so what we're meaning about weak ties here, it's not necessarily your existing network, you know, the, the people that you directly know. It's about reaching out to your weaker ties. And this notion too refers to, um, you know, getting out of your own swimming pool and uh, looking broader and further. So in, um, you know, so uh, compared uh, bridges, the notion of weak ties to bridges, you know, which really enable us to disseminate and get access to information that we might not all might not otherwise have access to. So try to get out of your pond or stop swimming in the same pond, uh, if you'd like to frame it like that, and consider the types of network ties you may have. So we will all have strong, weak, dormant, or no tie. So framing it in that way too. So looking at how do you reach out to weaker ties and thinking about strategies that you can undertake to actually do that. And some of that might be using your strong ties to get to weaker ties and referrals or reaching out to people uh, that you might know of, that you've heard of, you um, saw them speak somewhere, etc., uh, and giving them a reason as to why you'd like to talk to them or connect with them. So where can we network? Where can we network? Can we get some ideas in the chat here? Okay, so where, where are some opportunities to network? If you just uh, either take the mic or put your ideas in the chat. So let's see if we can build up a bit of a list of ideas about where can we, um, you know, in what sort of context or where can we start networking. Do we have any ideas about where we can, your know, ideas, okay, so where can we network? Uh, because we want to start getting a plan together uh, and start really um, you know, thinking about, okay, what can you actually really do and start to cement down a plan for your own networking? Good, uh, dear Kim Chi, thank you. So in class, uh, join other workshops or a seminar out of the class, a, pa a party, absolutely, absolutely. Right. A party, professional conferences and events, excellent, thank you. All right. Actually, you know, I was, uh, one of my colleagues uh, received a lead to her job by having a, a conversation with a lady on the bus. So there you go. So what does that say? Do we have any other ideas? Social events, excellent. Seminars, workshops, <laughs> anywhere, ha, anywhere, anytime. Excellent. Okay. So here's a, here's just some of uh, some ideas here. Some of them we've captured in the chat. So universities, yes, we've got that. Um, student clubs, career fairs. Thank you. 
uh, survival, you know, you, in your part-time job, don't forget, your part-time job, you're meeting people. Um, some people might be working in a part-time job uh, where they have the opportunity to connect with other people, uh, you know, in, in either with their customers or also in their colleagues. Professional associations, excellent. So um, professional associations do run uh, opportunities for professional development, uh, conferences and that kind of thing, uh, networking functions, online communities. Did we anybody get online communities? Don't forget those. And I suppose the first one that comes to mind here would be LinkedIn. All right, so that LinkedIn is a great tool. All right, but yes, as um, uh, T. Kim Chi said, uh, just about anywhere you can network. Okay, so thinking about your own uh, life and activities and starting to identify, okay, these are some places you could network and then starting to actively seek out and put yourself in those kinds of situations. So here's a little bit of a plan then. I'm getting started to evaluate your current network but also remembering that eventually we do want to start reaching out to some weaker ties as we become more confident. But it's always a good, good opportunity to start with your existing network. Like who is in your existing network? So reflect on um, your possible networks in your family, friends, neighbours, etc. Uh, list possible networks at university. Right. You know, sometimes having, you know, good conversations with some of your tutors or your peers or even your, and your lecturers can give you a lot of insight as well. Uh, possible contacts in your employment, past, present. Think about people you know through your community or your past interests through volunteering, sport, religious activities, etc. And then you can start to, you know, write down, map these networks and consider what and who they know and how they can they might be able to help you all right so uh, it's a good idea to start thinking about who is actually in your existing network uh, that you could reach out to often um, you might identify opportunities just through a casual conversation talking about what you're doing at the moment, what your hopes and dreams for the future are, what your aspirations are. You never know uh, who that person you're speaking to might know that they could point you to. So you can make yourself an action. So starting to make a solid action. So set some goals for yourself. Like for example, find three people in your current network um, to share your situation. Uh, what you're trying to achieve and uh, what they might know that could support you, right? So starting to build a uh, deliberate plan if you're wanting to really start get getting started on and uh, building your network and feeling more confident about it. So networking strategies, right? We've talked about you know building those relationships seeking advice, information, and recommendations. Now, this one here, be authentic, all right? Just be yourself and be a good listener and ask thoughtful questions. Pay attention to body language, eye contact, you, you want to come across as professional, uh, be a good listener and ask good questions, um, smiling, uh, showing people that you're, act, you're actively listening, clarifying. Uh, questions and follow up. This is another one. Uh, if somebody has uh, offered you some assistance um, and they've done something for you or pointed you in the right direction, it's really a good idea and very good manners to actually follow up and say thank you to that person, right? And keep the relationship going, right? Sometimes when I've uh, gone out and um, done, you know, help somebody who's asked for assistance and I've connected them, let's say with an industry professional or something like that, I, I feel good because I'm helping that person as we discussed before. But many times I never know what happened in the end. I didn't hear anything back. I didn't hear the outcome. I never heard anything else from that person after I helped them. So sometimes you can, you know, the person helping you, you think, well, 
geez, I would have liked to know what happened in the end because we all like to know the end of the story. And also, too, don't forget it's good professional behaviour uh, in a professional context to actually, you know, thank people for their assistance. Now, informational interviews, it's a, it's a fancy way for a, a fancy sort of title for having a what I call a career conversation. Uh, now, the, conducting informational interviews, you can, it, it's really about just having authentic conversations with people about to get more of that insight as some people mentioned before in the chat. Okay, uh, and at the same time, you have it, it does give that added benefit of expanding and, and building on your professional network. So, informational interviewing is really here are some of the benefits. Okay, it's really a conversation you can have with someone you know working in an area of an interest to you. You want to know more about it. You want to get a deeper insight um, that you, you know that you can't get on Google, for example. So about obtaining information about work in a particular industry or organisation, and I think um, somebody mentioned that before. Also, to clarifying your employment and, and career objectives, you might think, yes, this is something I'm interested in uh, that I think I'd, I'd like to do, but if you deepened your occupational research and by talking to people who actually do the jobs you might find out that um, it's not necessarily what you thought it was, or you can actually get deeper insight and a better understanding how that discipline connects, how things work in that discipline. And that can also help uncover opportunities or different pathways that you didn't know about before. So it really helps you learn about jobs you might be interested in and uh, potential of finding opportunities you couldn't find from the outside with strong industry connections. So it helps in that confirming uh, your choice of career pathway, finding out about day-to-day -day events, um, start getting a deeper understanding of different organisations, you know, shortlisting organisations where you think you'd like to work and building confidence in your ability to speak with employers. Right. It also helps um, in making contacts to obtain work experience. I once um, was running a workshop for some advanced business students and we were talking about this concept of um, conducting informational interviews. And the student group started um, a conversation amongst themselves where one half of the room was saying, oh, well, who would say, yeah, you know, if you reach out and ask somebody if you could have a conversation, why would they? They wouldn't do that. And the other side of the room were going, oh, no, 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 we had this as a set as a piece of assessment where we had to conduct five informational interviews as part of assessment. And so uh, that group was saying, oh, well, you know, we sent out, you know, like 50 um, requests to have a chat with somebody. Um, they didn't get a response from everybody, of course, uh, but they did get responses from quite a number. And um, so, and they went along and they conducted their informational interviews and uh, they learned a lot. But also one student said that uh, the person she was interviewing said, oh, you'd be really perfect for this um, opportunity that's going uh, in our company. Would you like a job? Would you like you know, an opportunity? You know, uh, so it was a very interesting debate amongst the students where some, some students were very skeptical about who would want to do, who would actually want to talk to you. And the other half of the room saying, no, 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 uh, you know, you've got to persist and you give people reasons why you want to talk to them and you can find out so much and you never know uh, where an opportunity might arise. So start if you're if you're not really comfortable with the idea of informational interviews and really uh, it's a fabulous strategy. It's a really great um, thing to do, but a lot of people will go, oh, no, yes, well, I understand that makes sense, but I couldn't do it. Uh, so starting to think about overcoming maybe and reframing, you're thinking about, well, how might you approach somebody? Uh, you know, what might you say? How might you reach out to somebody? Who you, might you reach out to? And Keeping in mind those things I've been talking about before, it is just about an authentic connection. All you're asking for is a conversation and some insight. So uh, there's links in this presentation to further resources. Uh, Google is your friend. 
So start learning about um, informational interviews and really here are some examples, curious questions when networking, right? Uh, you know, many examples. So can you tell me a little bit more about your background? Um, you know, what does your average day look like? Are there, and really important too, are there any other recommendations of people I could connect with? Do you, are you able to refer me to someone who might know a little bit more about this thing? So that's one of the additional outcomes is uh, getting referrals, all right? And it's a great question to start build, building momentum and growing your network. So now I'd just like to uh, finish uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, this part of the session about um, thinking about networking within intention. And you know, part of preparing well involves you know, developing your per, what they call your per personal brand or your professional brand. Uh, and you know, it also helps to have a way of introducing yourself in an interesting and memorable way. So let's first consider how you can build your professional brand and, and start net, networking with intention. You might like to frame to aligning your networking objectives with your career goals. So thinking about you know, your career plan, um, setting some particular goals and creating some objectives that might that may help you towards achieving your career goals. So this, um, I love this notion here. This is also from Stanford University's design lab. Uh, and it's called an odyssey, building what we call an odyssey plan. So it's just a five year sort of, you know, timeline and starting to think about what are some of the things you'd like to do in your life um, and achieve going forward, All right? And also to looking at, you know, how confident are you in that plan? Do you think you have the resources? Um, and starting to think about, okay, well, what are some things in my general life? Because of career, is not just about work. So starting to tailor, you know, thinking about your career plan uh, and setting some of those career goals, tailor your networking objections. So um, and making a bit of a purpose and make them clear. So you could start to think about, well, you could network with five people, or oh, sorry, I'm just gonna go back here, whoops. So let's say your goal is to, I forgot to say that, you know, to be, you'd like, you're interested in working in consulting. Uh, you'd like to be a consultant, you know, not far after graduation. So if that was something you were interested in doing and you wanted to work towards that and set your networking plan, uh, you might then start making the plan. So to network with five people working in consulting, right, and talk to them. Uh, someone from each of the big for consulting firms, for example. So identify relevant uh, firms you'd like to um, talk to people in. Uh, you might frame it as talking to some you know, people who are in their early career, like recent graduates who are working in consulting, mid-career or leadership. Um, hearing different perspectives, male, female perspectives, younger, older perspectives. And, or you might set yourself a goal to, to attend at least five industry events. So that's a good example of you know, um, making a strategic networking plan to get going because, of course, sometimes life does get in the way and we say, oh, I must do that, but you never do it. So starting to set some firm goals that you can work towards. So you'll need a strong purpose to connection in beginning to build confidence um, in who you are, it's part of preparing well, you know, part of preparing well involves developing your personal brand. So let's talk a bit about that. What, what is it? So personal branding is not about crafting a false or misleading persona. Instead, it's really about expressing your most authentic self by strategically showcasing skills, values, interests, and beliefs that are true to you. Uh, a true personal brand uh, revolves around what other people say about you. Okay, and we live in a time where everyone is overly focused on their branding and not focused enough on their brand. Okay, so thinking, you know, branding is sort of surface level, but um, but a brand is more of, of, about your your personal emo and emotional connections. So, in other words, to simplify this, what do you want to be known for? What's your professional reputation? 
right? So you could think about this. You could ask, you know, 10 people who know you really well for, you know, ask them for 10 words each on how they would describe you. All right, so thinking about what do you want to be known for? What's important to you um, and what do you stand for? So in order to work out your personal brand, you know, what you stand for can be helpful to answer you know, these kinds of questions about yourself. So who are you? Thinking about what are your unique attributes? What are your personal strengths? And, you know, how do other people think about you? Ask them. What do you want people to identify you with? Uh, so, you know, that can be, um, you know, we all we all know a lot of different people. So uh, if you think of someone that you know, uh, you know, they, you might perceive them as being reliable, uh, friendly, helpful. They might be persistent. Okay, so really thinking about your own unique strengths. Also, too, thinking about what's your vision of what you'd like to achieve, okay? What's your purpose? How do you want to serve? Who do you want to help? What kind of impact do you want to make in whatever field it is you're in? And what do you want people to remember about you? So that's, there's some you know, ideas to focus on, you know, uh, building your personal and reflecting on what you want to be known for and this is going to help you when you start reaching out to talk to people or to seek uh, networking connections or even having conversations with people so here's a free this is what we call a bit of a an elevator pitch so let's say you're approaching someone or you met someone at a networking event and you're having a conversation so think about how can you describe yourself in 20 to 30 seconds that includes what you do, who you do it for, and what your unique selling points are. All right, so uh, it's often called an elevator pitch, but uh, and you can adapt it depending on the circumstances that you're in. It could be something you write on your LinkedIn profile, but more importantly, in a networking situation here, it's really about you know when you when you meet somebody and they they or they say, well, tell me a little bit about yourself, or what are you doing here, etc. So you want to think about um, you know what drives you, what what value you engage, what's your passion, what are your interests. Who do you want to serve? So here's an example. All right. So it's important to start working on what your pitch might be or how, what you might say about yourself when you're reaching out to talk to somebody and giving them a reason why you'd like an informational interview, for example, or if you meet them in a networking context um, in any kind of situation. So I'm currently studying education at Griffith Uni. You know, one of my greatest strengths is, uh, you know, my ability to, you know, make conceptual, uh, conceptual practical. And I'm interested in securing an entry level role in a nonprofit uh, that allows me to teach and develop curriculum. Now, because nonprofit programs and fellowships were a key, you know, part of my development, um, it's important to me to pay that favour forward uh, and help students develop to their highest potential. So that's really, you know, what their values are, who they're wanting to help. And then the call, what I call the call to action. So how can that person that you're speaking to help you? You've got to let them know how can they help you. So I'd really appreciate any suggestions that you can provide. Oh, I'm just wondering, you know, if you could um, give me some insight into blah, blah, blah. All right. So if you haven't spent some time thinking about building an elevator pitch or being ready, uh, and this could be really helpful, let's say next week when you go to a careers fair and you're speaking to face to face to lots and lots of different recruiters, uh, or you've got a networking event coming up. So developing a 20 to 30 second elevator pitch, and you, you're not going to be preparing this to remember it word for word, but having one prepared ahead of time by doing some of the deep thinking around this can really help build confidence when you're speaking to people and then they'll know how to help you as well. 
So really, here's the key point. Being clear about what's most meaningful and motivating to you. Um, this enables you to have, you know, a chip to, to have genuinely interesting and mutually beneficial conversations with others. Um, and therefore helps you to develop some strong networks. Now, I, I just thought well, one of you commented earlier about um, feeling uh, confident, you know, more confident speaking to people who, about your same discipline uh, area, uh, whereas maybe not so confident talking to people where you, you can't immediately identify something in common. My advice in this situation is to ask open questions. All right. So people love talking about themselves, let's face it. So the more open questions, you just get the other person talking about themselves. So just asking, so what do you do? Just use that curiosity, curious conversations to go through that. So are you nurturing your network? So here are some really important uh, strategies uh, and tips for actually nurturing your network and supporting your brand of what you want to be known for. All right. I've coached, I, uh, I've lost count, how many students, but those who really show the persistence, they have a plan, they work hard at it, um, and they seek insight with humility and advice, and then they follow up, um, those, those students really always come back and say, I did this, I did that, this worked, this didn't. Uh, and also to um, the way they present themselves in professional contexts uh, has is actually fabulous. All right. So but they are these these students I know are doing all of these things on the slide right now. All right, with their networks and they report back to me about, oh, I reached out and this is what happened and um, here I am. And actually a couple of weeks ago, I had a cybersecurity incident uh, and I called the cybersecurity team at Griffith and the person, the cyber expert who came up on my screen was a student I'd been coaching in um, six months earlier and he had now secured his dream job in a cyber team at Griffith. So um, really great outcome stories. But um, that student had followed all of these kinds of strategies. Get to you know, um, your behaviours and your etiquette that support your professionalism and your brand, right? What do you want to be known for? Now, uh, LinkedIn, I'm not sure at what stage you're at with LinkedIn, but I'd highly recommend it. It is a really fabulous tool for all kinds of reasons. Um, this session is not going to focus on net, using, you know, using, net, uh, using LinkedIn, but if you um, are yet to uh, either establish an account on LinkedIn or you want to improve your profile up to all-star standard, um, we and then if you have done that already uh, and you want to learn how to leverage it better as a tool to enhance and support your networking activities, we um, do have a lot of resources on our SharePoint site, online modules, and we've also been running a whole series of seminars just like this one in the last few weeks um, on leveraging LinkedIn. So you might add that to your to-do list um, to review that as well. So in summary, um, you know, networking, let's reframe. Um, it's about connecting, not selling. Lots of benefits and it also changes over time as you progress, your, your intentions over time as you progress through your career. Uh, you can network just about anywhere and it's important um, when you're starting out to evaluate who is in your network and start to align some of your objectives to your chosen career goals or your career plan. Be curious, 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 curious. I love hearing people's stories. So asking lots and lots of open questions about people in a professional manner and be a really good listener. Look for insights, take advantage of the online networking tools, attend events. Actually, uh, students I've coached in the past, um, I said, well, you've got to look for opportunities everywhere. Um, never, never say no to an opportunity, even if you don't know what you're going to get out of it. 
And a couple of those students, um, they started uh, dropping in on events at other universities in the city and, um, you know, and, and meeting as many people as possible. So they were sort of uh, going above and beyond and um, they built huge networks and it, it got to the point that who didn't know those guys. Uh, ask for referrals and, you know, people to provide connections and Number one, to help build your confidence, really start thinking about what are you going to say when you meet people in networking situations? So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attendance today at this session. I hope you gain some, something valuable for you. Um, Danette, does anybody have any questions? I know I've been talking a lot, uh, but feel, please feel free. Does anybody have any particular questions or concerns? Um, before we, we wrap up today. Feel free to take the mic, pop them in the, any questions in the chat if you like. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, you will receive a copy of it after this. Nobody's got any questions, still absorbing, <laughs> still processing. So hopefully the session is, you know, is giving you a little bit of a kickstart as to how or where you're up to and how you might start um, improving or even beginning your networking strategy and some tools to do that. All right. Uh, we value your feedback. Um, you can uh, would really appreciate if you take a minute to give us some feedback on on this session and how we might be able to improve. You just scan the QR code there. Uh, KU uh, Counting, I want to do internship. Oh, okay, so I'm getting some questions now. Okay, I'm doing a Master of Professional Accounting. I want to do internship. How can I meet industry? I mean, ah, okay, so you want to make a, 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 a direct approach to an organization. So there's various strategies that you can use to do that. Number one um, is, well, that long-term plan about starting to meet people in the profession by looking at what kinds of events are being run by either your school or by professional associations. Uh, master accounting students I've known in the past have gone to um, either the CA or CPA events and become actively involved in those associations to meet people. Uh, number two is really looking at LinkedIn and starting that um, connection, uh, building connections in the field, reaching out and following some of these strategies. It's not necessarily, networking is not necessarily about, hi, um, you know, do you have an internship? The, you know, like approaching people cold that way. Uh, it's, I mean, you can make direct approaches to organisations, but um, you need to provide like a, a speculative um, type of inquiries, whereas you're more likely to be successful if you already have warm introductions uh, through networking connections. Um, you can look for formal internship uh, opportunities through uh, Graduate Connection or Grad Australia uh, is where the formal internship programs are conducted. Or you would also look in your program itself for any work integrated learning, uh, work placement or internship opportunities. Um, but if you'd like more information specifically, uh, please feel free to make an appointment to discuss it further. Uh, T. Kimchi, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, and you really like the reframing, yes. And that is how I live is uh, by, is that my favourite way to think about networking. I don't, I, I just throw the word networking out. And for me, it's about just being curious and um, hearing about people, people's lives, um, seeking advice and asking good questions. So all the very best um, to everyone and know that there's a big uh, support team here to help you with no matter what questions you have. Don't forget if you're on the Gold Coast uh, next week or you can always travel to the Gold Coast, um, the Gold Coast Careers Fair is being held on Tuesday. And there's the code there. You can register your interest in attending and have a look at who's coming, etc., and start preparing your pitches uh, and your questions. 
Uh, the industry mentoring program is a fabulous uh, opportunity for you to have some personal support from an industry professional. We don't pay them. They come to us and volunteer because they want to help people uh, as they were helped. And actually quite a number of mentors in that program were students uh, in the past and, and actually had mentors in that program. And now that they're along in their careers, uh, they want to give back and help others. So have a look at that opportunity and where you might fit that into your program at some point, and you can also participate in it after you have graduated. Uh, if you're an international student, uh, my colleagues Mooney and Belinda will be are running a whole series of um, international student careers topics, uh, so you can um, have a look at registering for those. So thank you for your time. I've gone a little bit over. Have a great day, everybody. Um, and I look forward to meeting you at some point. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day.